Now, before we end Blue July, there is just the big finale to take to the sky. It's time I go back one more time to the worst Blue Sky Studios movie. The one I gave the Ribbon of Disgrace to, Ice Age 5. I thought I might do a writography over how I'd write Ice Age 5. Let's start off with the premise. First off, I'd take all the space stuff away, as well as the prophecy and magic crystals that give everlasting youth, and instead use that story for an original story for Blue Sky Studios, known as Jason Cosmic and the Collision Course. I'll expand on the idea of the story later on in the video. What to use instead is the fact that there's a bit of global warming that happens. Sid will go through an arc within himself where he believes that he's acting inconsistent, which later on in the film, Sid and Manny will have a pep talk about their past behaviours. And Manny, despite Sid's antics, apologises and recognises he's still Sid's friend. Brooke can still be a thing, but instead, what if her happy and bubbly personality hides her miserable past of being abandoned by her family, just like Sid? Something for both Sid and Brooke to have in common. This parallel of experiences, much like the other Ice Age couples, would make the chemistry between the two stronger. Then there's the big thing that happens. Sid, Manny and Diego bump into the baby from the first movie, but now as an adult, for a wholesome reunion and to tie off the series. On the topic of tying things off, we could have seen what happened to Diego's old pack after Soto died. Unless he's... <gasps> not actually dead! One thing you don't know about me is that I have two dream jobs in mind. I want to be an animator and a movie director. Blue Sky Studios was one of the companies I really wanted to work with. And here are some ideas for movies that I'll present in the video. My first idea, as mentioned earlier, is Jason Cosmic and the Collision Course. Not only the substitute movie of Ice Age 5, but it can be made into a trilogy. In this movie, it's about Jason Cosmic, who is an underdog space cadet that wants to prove himself as a soldier. A meteor was crashing towards Earth, but by pure luck, it was destroyed before it did any damage. This gives Jason the idea of lying about that he destroyed it to become a hero. At some point in the story, Jason's father would give him some advice, which is that being a hero isn't about forming a fist whenever you feel like it, it's about extending a hand and giving help to those who need it. Jason, at first, doesn't believe his advice, but after Jason's promotion under a lie, his next mission revolves around stopping another meteor crashing towards Earth, and is ordered from the General to work with another team, which includes Hornrack, a silent robot that communicates through holograms and electronic face expressions, Fred, best friend of Jason, Chloe, Jason's hyperactive girlfriend, Margot, the intelligent girl jerk with a good judge of character, and Elvis the Rocking Fun Fighter to take down an evil alien force known as the Dystopias who manipulated the meteors in the first place. Yes, yes, I know what you're thinking. This is going to be a liar revealed story and we don't want that. Well, think again. I want to do this differently. Have the characters be separated accidentally right when the truth's revealed. And then the characters are left with their own thoughts. And instead of Jason being vilified for his actions, the team becomes stronger after the truth is revealed, because despite him lying, they know what was in his heart. What I want the movie to sell the most is not just to make the meteor chase exciting, but also the chemistry between the team. While at the same time, the protagonist learning the lesson of helping others while fighting off bad guys. Later on, this will be a trilogy with the second being the rise of the Phantom Titans, and the third being the secrets of Utopia. My second idea, is Rio One and a Half. This would be a spin-off of Rio that would focus on Nico and Pedro. In this movie, it will introduce how the two met before they meet Blue in the first movie. It would also show what Nico and Pedro did during the times they disappeared from the film before the next time they showed up. I know this will sound similar to The Lion King One and a Half, but I can see it working. My third idea would be a Candyland movie. In this story, Lord Licorice steals the Gumball Orb to make his candy, the Licorice, much more tasty due to him being jealous about the stigma of Licorice tasting awful. So King Candy sends a gingerbread to meet up with Mr. Mint, Jolly, Grandma Nut, Lolly, Princess Frostine, and Gloopy, where they need to think of a plan to stop him. Now, 
there's just one more thing to talk about. Which company should revive Blue Sky Studios? One suggestion was Paramount. However, I believe Netflix could take over Blue Sky Studios. Given how Netflix can invest in animation, even though sometimes they don't, Blue Sky Studios might have a chance in bouncing back with them. When I started this series, I thought it was possible Blue Sky Studios could be bought by one of the big guys. But I guess nothing lasts forever. To all Blue Sky Studios animators, I hope you found new projects to work on and a new studio to work with. I made this series to help you remember all the good stuff you did in the studio. Well, this is it. We're finished. Blue July is finally done. To end the video, here's one tribute clip to show you.